Uh, so tonight's main topic, we're going to be talking about budget outfielders that you guys should be picking up. So let me, we're going to go, I guess we'll go left, then center, and then right. It should be... Works uh, for me. Uh, of course, you can go out here and you can spend a ton on uh, outfielders if you really want to. Uh, you can buy a Ralph Kiner for somewhere between 60 and 95 grand. You can go get a 13,000 Coco Crisp in left field. Uh, but we're going to talk about the guys uh, that are going to be under 1,000 stubs for you. Uh, so if you need guys and you don't have a ton to spend, uh, these are the guys you should be going after. Uh, Jason, we're going to start with your two picks. So uh, why don't you tell them who your first one is? Yeah, the, my first pick is a guy that led my team in hitting in MLB 15 the show, and he is again leading my team in hitting in MLB 16. And that's Corey Dickerson. He's on the Tampa Bay Rays now. Last year he was on Colorado, and he started out the season, uh, I believe, with high 90s contact, and then uh, his power was like 81 or something against right-handed pitches, but it's since dropped. He's gotten a ratings decrease, and also his inside edge hasn't been as good. Uh, in the beginning of the year, he was getting inside edge boost almost every day. So uh, the numbers I've been able to put up with this Corey Dickerson card, in 232 at-bats, I'm hitting 392 for average, with 26 home runs. So he's bringing the contact and the power for me. The only thing you really got to worry about with him is the fielding. Uh, he will make some errors, especially if you put him in a secondary position like right field or center field. So you really, you've got to stick with him in left field, and you're probably going to want a defensive substitution for the later innings. But, man, as far as hitting the ball goes, uh, you can't find many better options for 100 stubs than Corey Dickerson. Yeah, he was a guy I would have come off my bench uh Earlier in the season, just as uh, a nice uh, pinch hitter late in the game. Also, if you get him in uh, Battle Royal, he's a good uh, he's a good option, especially if you need uh, a guy just to come off the bench. I wish he was faster, but yeah, that's why you got to, another thing you got to do with him is when you're picking your home field, try to pick one that has a shallow left field. Uh, so that's definitely something to consider when you're using a player like Dickerson. Just take the pull. Also, around. his. 89 clutch with runners in scoring position in late in games. Don't ever forget that. Yep. That's Love that clutch one. rating. Yep. Uh, and then your next left fielder is? Yeah, so I usually start with Dickerson, and then the replacement that I'll bring in for him a lot of times is Eric Young Jr. He's actually a free agent this year. I think at one point last year he was either on the Braves or the Rockies. Uh, so the one downside of using him is you're not going to get any progress towards the the missions the missions for racking up innings. But I still like him as a contact hitter, as a defensive substitution, and as a pinch runner. So I don't start Eric Young Jr., but I bring him in off the bench. And any good opponent that you play is going to recognize his speed. Uh, I believe all his speed ratings are like 98 or 99, and they're going to put up that bunt defense shift on you. So what you have to do with Eric Young when you're at the plate with him is you got to start that cursor, start it really low in the zone, and look for a ball that you can just drive for a single. You want to use the contact swing. And using that tactic, I've actually hit for a 409 average with him. Uh, no doubles, no triples, no home runs, just all singles on those. Yeah, he's got 97 speed, 99 stealing, and 99 base running aggressive. 64 bunt only, 61 drag bunt. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my stolen bases with him. I've got 30 stolen bases and only caught stealing twice. So he's pretty much automatic to get to second base. I wouldn't recommend going for third base if you're playing a, against a created catcher because most of those guys have 99 arms. But, you know, if you're playing against like a Jonathan Lucroy uh, or even like a Jared Saltamalakia, those are guys you can probably get to third base on with Eric Young. Also a 69 plate vision for him. So the strategy you're talking about using the contact swing is really is ingenious in terms of not just using the contact swing in terms of a two strike protect the plate, but using it to get more solid contact than you would with the X. Yep. And the other nice thing about that young, he's got the high hot zones. So people don't like to pitch the hot zones online. They like to pitch the cold zones and his are down low. So what's again, you just want to sit your cursor, sit it in that lower portion of the plate and you want to look for a breaking ball and then just use that contact swing to either bloop it over the head of an infielder or drive it up the middle or into a gap just for that single with the contact swing. Yeah, uh, I think I I did a little bit of a Braves franchise last year. I think he started the team on the, on the Braves at the beginning of last year. I actually think I hit home run with him, and I couldn't believe it. I like jumped out of my seat when it happened. 
Uh, he also has 83 fielding and 86 reaction, so he's not going to be a huge liability in the outfield, but he has no arm. So he's... Yeah, if I don't bring him in to the left field, the other place I like to put him is second base, and his arm's a lot less of a liability if you put him at second base because he's got that as a secondary position. Yeah. All right, Chris, give me, uh, give me some left fielders. Oh, my first one, and we're going to go a little off of what I normally do with the defense, but Jason Wirth, Washington left fielder, currently right now is a 300 sell 150 buy constantly gets ie boosts on what he has now is a 70 contact versus righties 78 contact versus lefties 71 power versus lefties still gives you an 82 arm strength in left field uh, with a 68 fielding um 71 clutch uh, just a guy that you can put out in left field and he's going to consistently just hit line drives for you with with some pop against lefties um i really like his 67 reaction for being kind of a corner outfielder without a huge defensive boost uh the other guy that i like the oh, i'm sorry anything you like to say about that because plate vision is a little lower than i normally like um but just like i said a guy that has good overall stats against righties and lefties uh that's pretty cheap right now yeah i had him in a I think I have him in the Battle of Royal I have going right now. Uh, I had him coming off the bench, and whoever I had in left uh, took a fly ball off the face. Jason Worth had to come in, and he had a catch-slash-throw-out double play uh, getting a guy at home. So that arm is nice to have. But you may and now the, go with your next pick if you'd like. Yeah, the other one, I was going to pick Alex Gordon because of how much I'm in love with his defense, but... Instead, we go on a little further west to Arizona, and Yasmani Tomas, uh, much heralded Yasmani Tomas when he came over uh, as a third baseman, but now playing corner outfield, 70 contact. Again, another guy that you're just going to get good overall stats with, 70 contact versus righties, 72 versus lefties, average power of 44 and 54 Plate vision isn't great, clutch isn't great, but again, you go back to that 92 arm strength in left field, uh, 67 fielding, 64 reaction. But even better, he's by 15, sell 35 right now with still a 67 speed. So we'll be able to play in most left fields for you. I wouldn't try him out in like a Cincinnati with huge outfield, but, you know, could play Baltimore easily, uh, Fenway, stuff like that. And has the arm strength to get guys out at second base yeah, and hold those play doubles. Like righty Yankee Stadium for you. Yep. Also has third base eligibility. Yeah. So with a 92 arm strength, you take a 5% hit on the fielding the accuracy and the reaction. Still going to be average, but could play third base for you as a in a pinch. Okay. Uh, and the two I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Christian Yelich. He comes right in under the... Uh, our 1,000 cap. Uh, right now, he's got a buy now 950, sell now 740. Uh, uh, 90 contact versus righties, 76 contact versus lefties, uh, 78 discipline, which we said doesn't matter, 66 vision, which I feel like it's a, his gets he has a lot bigger than uh, 66 vision. Uh, his or no vision is not PCI, right? Contact is PCI. Contact is PCI. Vision, vision is, is outside the, the area vision. around it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, so 90 contact versus right, he's, he, PCI is huge. Uh, also 90 fielding, uh, decent arm stats, 67 speed isn't terrible. Uh, and play all three outfield positions for you. Uh, but just a ton of contact, very similar to uh, Corey Dickerson, uh, but just a little bit more than him. Uh, not as much power as Dickerson has, though. Um, uh, one thing you can do with a guy like uh, Yelich, who has that not 90 contact, but only like 50 to 60 power, is you can try doing the power swing button. And the cursor always shrinks a little bit when you press that button, but because his cursor is so large to start out, it's not going to actually shrink this cursor too much. So I, I would definitely recommend trying to use the power swing. It's not always going to get home runs either. A lot of times it'll just hit these hard line drives that'll go into the gaps for doubles and triples. So that's definitely an approach you can take with somebody like him. Uh, and then for the other one, I'm going to go with uh, Clay Thompson's brother, uh, Trace Thompson. He's got an IE boost right now. It's taken up to an 87. It seems a little ridiculous. Uh, he's just kind of good overall. He's got 57 contact and power versus righties, uh, 69 contact 
and, versus lefties and 70 power versus lefties. Uh, but right now he's got plus 13 IE boosts on both of those. Uh, what's it? I think bringing up, bringing him from a 78 to an 87. Uh, so that's not bad. You're going to be able to get him for less than 350 stubs. Uh, 67 speed. And assuming uh, they don't play him every day, I think he'll end up going up higher. Uh, so far this year, he's been very good for the Dodgers. So I would definitely keep an eye on Trace Thompson. And basically everybody on the Dodgers has been getting good inside edge boost almost the whole season. Yep. All right, so let's uh, let's switch gears over to center field. Uh, Jason, why don't you give us your first center fielder, which is technically a right fielder, right fielder. but I don't feel like yelling at you right now. Yeah, I had a hard time really finding any natural center center fielders in this game that fit kind of what I want out of the position. Uh, the number one thing I always look for is arm strength because I want to have a guy that when singles are hit up the middle, I want to have a guy that can throw somebody out at home plate or throw them out at third base. And uh, the, the guy I went with for my first pick is Yasiel Puig. He's got the 95 arm strength, which is the main thing I'm looking for. Uh, he is a little wild on his throw sometimes, doesn't have the greatest accuracy. Uh, but in addition to that 95 arm strength, he's also got 78 speed, which is going to help cover up for those fielding ratings not being that great. Only 62 fielding, 70 reaction. So he, he might not get a great jump on the ball, but he's got a high enough speed rating that it can kind of counteract it. And a lot of times he'll be like a late closer where he just gets there in time and, and just barely gets to the ball. So uh, I definitely like him for his defense. So what you have to do on offense with him, since he doesn't have great ratings, you see on that burst right-handed pitchers and burst left-handed pitchers on his hot and cold zones, he only has one cold zone, depending on which person you're facing. And again, people online, they love to throw to those cold zones. So all you have to do with Puig, just start that cursor, start it in the cold zone, and just sit there and wait for the ball to come. And that's how I've gotten some really nice numbers with Puig. Uh, he was actually a card I pulled in my pre-order packs. So I've got 278 at-bats with him. And in those at-bats, I'm hitting 378 for the average with 26 home runs, which really surprised me because, again, his ratings aren't that great. But, man, it's just something about having a place that you can sit your cursor and know that the ball is going to come there. You know, if you're squaring up to the ball and your ratings are in the 60s, you're going to get good hits a lot of the time. Yeah, and uh, with him, I feel like I go very well to the opposite field. Uh, rather than trying to pull with him. Hmm. That's interesting because, yeah, I've had pretty much the exact opposite experience because if you look at those codes of cold zones, they're both on the left-hand side of the plate, and he's a right-handed hitter. So I'm interested. How, how, what's been your approach with him? This? So how, how have you had success going to the opposite field? Uh, just looking low and in, as always. And Okay, okay. So, yeah, I guess your, your hitting style is more you just you have one plan and you do it for all your hitters. Is that kind of how you roll? Yeah, pretty much I, uh, I focus low and in. And make them come to me, essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, the way I hit online is I, I try to have a plan with every every guy every guy on my team. So like for Puig, I'm just sitting on those inside cold zones. Uh, for somebody like Jared Saltimalakia, I'm usually sitting on that high inside cold zone that he has. So I just try to pick one location. And for Puig, it's real easy because he just has that one cold zone. Uh, next up, you want to talk about. Let me find him while you start talking. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get to my number two guy. He's pretty similar. He's the flashback uh, 25 collection man reward, Shin Su Chu. Uh, he's the Seattle Mariners collection reward. And again, he's got a lot of arm strength. It's a 96 arm. Uh, what separates him from Puig is that he has a lot better fielding ratings. So you're not going to bobble many balls. You're going to get real smooth fielding animations. Uh, he doesn't have as much speed, only a 70 speed. So he's not really a threat to steal bases. But, you know, having in the field, you're going to be fine with him. You're going to get to pretty much every ball that comes his way. And again, he's got that rocket arm, a little better accuracy than Puig, but still not great accuracy. So the ball won't always be on target, but it'll get there quickly. Uh, offensively, I, you can see that versus right-handed hitters, he's amazing. But versus left-handed hitters, you really have to hunker down and just go for contact swings only. Uh, and also the advantage he has of being a left-handed hitter, whereas Puig is a right-handed hitter, means that in certain situations you can come up and lay down a bunt depending on the defensive sh uh, shift that they're using. And, you know, he can bunt for singles just because he's on that, that right-handed side of the batter's box being a left-handed hitter. 
Uh, Millennium, do you have this guy on your team for this, tonight's game? I do have Shinsu Chu, but he's not going to be on my team because I try to stay away from the flashbacks, even though he is a budget guy. Yeah, uh, we have uh, right now. You can buy him off the market for probably like two thousand, three thousand coins uh, stubs. But uh, what you're going to want to do is the uh, Mariners twenty five man collection uh, mission, which is going to cost you less than a thousand. Which is why he makes it in on this list. Yep, absolutely. And we yeah, can't talk the... about this enough. The the, the twenty five man collections. Guys, you have to do these. If you're if you are a budget player, look at every one of those twenty five man collections for all thirty teams and see who helps your team. We talked. We've talked about the Casimir before. We've talked about the big sexy Bartolo Colon before. We're talking about the Sin the, the Shinsu Chu right now. And all of the these guys. Can help. Yeah. If you don't have the salt salty. Lamakia, what are you doing? I saw a snake doctor who's in the chat. Or, I mean, that's not not snake. It was uh, MLB the tip. Uh, MLB the show tips. Absolutely retweeted a 507 foot home run by by the flashback salty today. It's just what he do. Yeah, yeah. I, I love those 25 man collections. That's how most of my team was built. And the nice thing about those guys is they don't have the inside edge to worry about. So a lot of the times when uh, you know when Puig was taking a hit on his inside edge, I just put Chu in there, and boom, you got pretty much the same player, uh, just a little worse against left handers. Yeah, and the good thing with all those guys is they all have at least. One, usually two or three things that they all do well. So it's nice to have that. Yeah, they do have drawbacks. And with Chu, his drawback is the vision rating. I believe it's like a 16 or something really low. Uh, so, again, what you have to do with those low vision guys, when you get two strikes, you got to use the contact swing if you don't want to strike out. Uh, with Chu, I mean, I, I use the contact swing anyways just because he doesn't have a ton of power. But, again, with those low vision guys, you got to use contact swing to expand the PCI to decrease your chances of striking out. All right, Millennium, you want to go with uh, your two center fielders? Yeah, my first one is Mike Trout because he was budgeted to me because I got him for free. Mm -hmm. um, right? Sure, right? That counts, I think. Pretty good, right? It, it okay, so a 1,000 subs is a pack, right? So technically, any player. <laughs> Actually, no, this was, a, this was one of the free packs for the 10 day login, so there was no 1,000 subs. Anyway, so to be serious, both of mine have been named in the chat which makes me feel good that I have that kind of backup. The first one is going to be Ben Revere of the Washington Nationals. Not only does he have great ratings in terms of 74 contact versus righties, 84 contact versus lefties, 92 plate vision to go along with 93 speed, 94 steel, also has 80 fielding, 86 reaction. Where you lose off is that arm strength. But the other really cool thing is his, is his card uh, – I'm a fan of his card, uh, what's the word, the card action that I'm seeing right now in Daddy Leagues. It's just really cool. So uh, His card looks awesome. He's a great speedy center fielder for you, can lead off without question. I mean, that's what you're looking for in a center fielder that when you're not looking for an arm. The other one's a little surprising, and I think you and I, TJ, both had the same reaction when I, when I said this, is that Adam Jones... Uh, center fielder for the Orioles started this year as gold, had a terrible first month and a half of the year of the season, is down now to a buy 505, sell 721. 67 contact versus righties, 60 contact versus lefties, 69 power versus righties, 65 power versus lefties. That's just the beginning. 92 clutch, 68 plate vision. The plate vision is a little lower than I like, but still not bad. 92 fielding, 88 arm strength, 88, or I'm sorry, 86 arm accuracy, and 87 reaction. The 63 speed combined with the 92 fielding and the 87 reaction makes him one of the best fielding center fielders in this game. Yeah, he's going to run into a couple home runs for you, but, but that fielding is huge. Yeah, exactly. He's going to help you on both sides. He doesn't have a drawback. That's what I like about him. And the other part is, since that first month and a half, he's tearing the cover off the ball. This guy is going to get back to gold sooner rather than later. If you're looking for somebody to grab a couple of and make some stubs, grab this guy low. He will be gold soon, and you will hate yourself for not grabbing a couple. I would like to see a little bit higher contact, but I'm not going to complain. 
No, and, and that's, I mean, Jones's game has always been chase a little bit, mm-hmm. lower contact, a lot of power, so. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I am not going to do what everybody's p- thinking right now. I'm not going to say uh, Odubel Herrera. I'm just not a huge fan. I get it. He's got great contact. Uh, 90 contact versus righties, 79 versus lefties, uh, 70, uh, 63 vision, 82 speed, can play center field, left field, right field, second and short. Great card. Not a huge fan of him. I don't like his batting stance. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, I just don't play well with him. So, but I know everybody w- wants to talk about Odubel Herrera. Uh, they were complaining last week that we didn't mention him in our budget second baseman. Uh, but I am going to go with two guys that I think are quite good. Uh, we're going to go with Jackie Bradley Jr. right now. Uh, he's a 703 sell, 885 buy, so you can probably get him for like 725 if you really want. Uh, 70 contact versus righty is 87 contact versus lefties. Uh, and a lefty with high contact versus lefties is very hard to come by. Uh, that's actually a good thing if you think about it, because a lot of times uh, when the other, like your team is going to have a lot of good right handed batters against lefties. But then when they bring in their bullpen later, you're going to have a whole bunch of guys that might not be that great against righties. Uh, and Jackie Bradley can be that lefty in your lineup against the lefty and still play well uh, and still hit well against the righty when they bring him in from the bullpen later. Uh, 52 visions, kind of low, uh, but he's got 86 fielding, 88 arm strength, 88 re- reaction. Accuracy is a little low, uh, but 80 speed is nice. Uh, I don't know how much higher he's going to go. Probably not much. Uh, he got some nice boosts during his hitting streak and stuff. Uh, but I think this, what's he, an 84 now? He might go gold. I think he's going to do a lot like the uh, uh, the Mookie Betts last year where he's going to be right on that cusp of silver and gold all year long. Uh, so he's not really an investment piece. He's more of a, this is kind of where his price I think is going to be for the rest of the year. Uh, anybody else got thoughts on Jackie Bradley Jr.? I agree. I, if that's one of the guys that, uh, again, MLB The Show Tips talked about him constantly. Um, one of those guys that if you didn't jump on him already, I don't know that you jump on him now. Yeah. Um, unless, you, like I said, unless you're looking for a budget team. If you're looking for investments, I, I think you, stay, you have to stay away from him because how much better is he going to get? He's cooled off a little bit in the last couple of weeks. Um, he's kind of passed that torch to Mookie Betts. Um, oh, no. I, uh, is Bogart still having his hitting streak, or is that end? Uh, Bogart's, I think it ended Friday. I could be wrong. Um, but even so, now he's going to get even more play time because of Swihart's injury, since Swihart was getting time in left field. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he goes any higher than he is right now. Uh, Xander Bogart's hitting streak ended at twenty six. Yeah. All right, and then the next guy I'm going to go with is, let me see if I can find him here, Marcel Ozuna, uh, Marilyn, Marilyn's, uh, Marlins center fielder, uh, 68 contact versus righties, 89 contact versus lefties, 78 power versus lefties. Uh, he's a nice guy to have out there. 57 speed. I feel like his speed should be faster. Uh, maybe that's just an optical illusion. Uh, 48 vision isn't great. Uh but again, he's a real good uh, option against left-handed pitching. Decent fielding numbers. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, but uh, but I'm a fan. I'm more of a fan of him than uh, Odubel Herrera. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, versus lefty, he's all red. So. No, oh, yeah, and above average fielding. I, I think you. That's he kind of falls into the Adam Jones thing where he doesn't steal a lot of bases. So his speed isn't going to be you know his actual speed. I think speed. Your stolen base stats go into your speed in this game when they do the ratings. So his 72 reaction and his 70 fielding, I think will make up for that in center field. Um, the 79 arm strength is no slouch. I mean, I love this guy against lefties. I, I think you put him out there against lefties and you have, you know, another guy out there that you can, they can replace him with um, just in case uh, righty comes in. Cause I don't think he plays well. I mean, he gets a hit against righties uh, with a 75 clutch late, but yeah, I absolutely love being against lefties. Uh, if you do put him in center field, I mean, one thing you can always consider is trying, again, trying to find a park that has a small outfield just to hide that 57 speed a little bit. Uh, what is it, Oak Street 
I think is one of the minor league stadium has one of the smaller outfields in the game. Uh, Franco Park, another minor league stadium, has a pretty small outfield. So definitely look for those if you're going to put one of these guys like Ozuna out there in center. Yeah, and Millennium does not like minor league parks. No. He's a jerk <laughs> and hates them. Uh, let's hop over to right fielders. Jason, give me your first guy. Yeah, in right field, I'm going to go with another 25-man collection reward player. Uh, this is the one for the New York Yankees. It's Nick Swisher. Uh, he's listed at right field, but he can also play first base. And since he's left-handed, uh, that makes him a good play at first base to get those left-handed tag-out animations on pickoffs. But if you do put him in the outfield, you're going to have to worry a little bit about his fielding because he's slow. I believe his speed is in the 40s. And all of those fielding and arm strength and all those stats, they're all – all those stats are in the 60s. So he can be a little bit of a defensive liability if you put him in the field. I mostly play him at first base. But offensively, you're going to do amazing with him. Uh, he can hit for contact or power against righties. And then against lefties, he's mostly just a contact hitter. Uh, the also nice thing is his hot zones are pretty much the same versus right and left-handed pitchers. So you don't have to change your approach with them. Uh, if another pitcher comes in in relief, uh, what usually happens is most people try to paint the corners to go to those corner cold zones. And unless their pitcher is really accurate, they're going to get behind in the count. So you can just leave your cursor, leave it in that middle where he's got the four hot zones and wait for a pitch to come to you and you can just crush it. You don't even have to use the power swing with him because he's got that 95 power. I've hit a ton of home, run home runs just using the X button, the normal swing. Uh, looking at my stats with him, I've got 16 home runs and 111 at bats, so he's on a pretty good pace. And he still hits for a decent average. He's hitting 315 for me in those 111 at bats. All right. And your next guy? And number two, I've got him right. Again, not the greatest defensively. It's Miguel Sano and also another guy that has the sneaky secondary position. For Sano, the secondary position is third base. So some days I play him at third. Uh, some days I play him in right field. Some days I play him in left field. Uh, really, the only place you can't play him is center field because, again, like Swisher, his fielding ratings and arm strength are all in the 60s. His speed is a little higher. Got that 54 speed. And so as a result of that, I haven't made as many errors with Sano as I have with Swisher. Uh, but also the difference, main difference really between these two guys is going to be the hitting. Uh, so no, his vision is very low, only 16 vision. So you're going to have to protect when he gets two strikes. You're going to have to use that contact swing to avoid striking out. And then also uh, you're going to have a little easier time hitting for power against left handers. If you go with Sano, uh, he also benefits from inside edge. I noticed that he has the inside edge boost almost every day. He's one of those cars that gets a plus 10 to his stats on a pretty regular basis. Uh, I believe today he's actually stationary, but this is like the first time in probably a month that he hasn't had like a plus 10 inside edge boost. Yeah, and I wonder, with the Twins kind of being out of it, I wonder if they're going to trade uh, Trevor Floof, whatever his last name is, uh, and move end up moving Snow back to third base, uh, which would be nice to have, it, have his fielding not hurt you. Uh, by taking that hit. Yeah, playing him at third base, I haven't had a single error the entire year. So that's definitely, you know, if you're going to choose between a position, that's where he's best at is third base. But he can play right field if you need to put him there. Yeah. And he mashes for me as well. So I highly agree with that pick. Uh, Chris? What's going on? I think the first guy we want to talk about here is Cole Calhoun right fielder for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim of, of Los Angeles, of Anaheim. Um, his his contact versus righties is 70, 71. His power versus righties is 72. Not a guy you're probably going to play against lefties, but his clutch is 81. Um, his fielding is a 90. Arm strength is an 81. Reactions is a 63 on a 58 speed. Selling for 155, buy for 102. Uh, again, Gonna have when you when you look at these budget guys, you're looking you're gonna have one drawback. His drawback is gonna be against lefties. The good thing is, is most of Diamond Dynasty at that level, you're not gonna see too many of the lefties. So, that's your first guy you want to start with. The guy that I would back him up with is Steven Souza Jr. of the Tampa Bay Rays. Mm -hmm. Low contact ratings, 45 and 49. Normally is on an IE boost, though, that gets them up closer to 60. 
but his power is 73 and 80 again with the IE boost. Really low plate vision, not a lot otherwise outside of his 70, uh, 70 fielding. Sneaky 72 speed, uh, a lot faster than I would think somebody his size. Arm strength is a 77, reactions a 75, under 100 stubs. Will hit if he hits anything, he hits for power. So it's going to be a double or a home run every time he makes a contact. Um, so definitely one of those guys. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. Third guy you want to look out for is we talked about him earlier is Noir Mazzara from the Texas Rangers. Again, a guy that absolutely mashes righty pitching. Not great in the field, not great in his plate vision clutch ratings, but a guy you can put in there against most righties and hit for average and power. All right. Great choices all around. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, – the problem is I always forget what team, what these guys are actually rated. Uh, first up, I'm going to go with David Peralta. Assuming I can find his card. The Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, you can get him. You can probably put a buy order in for 100 steps right now and get him, which would be nice because he's got plus nines across the board uh, to go on top of his 84 contact versus righties and 77 power versus righties. Uh, first lefties, he's got a little bit uh, to be uh, to be desired, but that's all right. Uh, we've also given you some other good options against lefties that you can platoon with him uh, to work that out. 60 speed, still kind of slow. His outfield reaction is a little slow, but uh, he's going to be slapping balls all over the field for you, so he's going to be he's going to be worth more than the liability that he is. Uh, and the other guy who we always talk about, we're going to go with uh, Stephen Piscotti here. Uh, 79 contact versus righties, 82 contact versus lefties, uh, power for both in the 60s, uh, 77 clutch, 70s for all the fielding stuff, 55 speed, uh, gives you all three outfield positions and first base as a secondary. Uh, nice guy from the looks of it. Also gives you good uh, good IE boosts most of the time. Uh, so definitely somebody I would pick up. How is he doing like in real life? Is he going to get like a boost anytime soon, like a, a nice boost at some point? I think he is. I think we, and we talked about this with Paul Sporer back in uh, a previous episode. I think at some point this year he gets to gold, even though he's an 81 now. Yeah, he's hitting 311, um, seven home runs, which is already the same that he had last year in 10 more games that he played. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, higher on base percentage. His slugging's a little lower than last year, but uh, he's playing better than last year. Yeah, I think I think he's going to end up probably around the mid '80s for for contact and the mid '70s for power. Uh, plate vision probably right where it's about supposed to be. His clutch might go up a little bit, but I mean, for what he is, I, I think he'll hit probably right around eighty forty five by the time the year's over. All right. Uh, so there you go. There's a whole bunch of uh, suggestions, so you don't have to go and spend. 120,000 coins, 112,000 coins, trying to get yourself a flashback of Dave Winfield. Uh, that, that is a beautiful card, so I kind of want it. But Or this other flashback Dave Winfield, which isn't as beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to do it for the main topic of the show. Uh, don't forget, if you guys have any questions, you can ask us on Twitter. I'm at That Sports Gamer. Chris is at Millennium OS. And Jason is at J Young OS. Uh, we'll have links to all that in the description uh, in the YouTube video. Uh, but those are names that are easy to spell. So don't worry about it. 